When the American Civil War broke out in April of 1861, uh, faraway California wasn't really thought of by many, uh, although the state did end up playing a pretty large role during the war and its people were pretty divided. California was admitted to the Union as the 31st state on September 9, 1850. It joined as a free state, shifting the balance to 16 free states and 15 slave states. Yet despite slavery being outlawed by the California Constitution, it was openly practiced. The existence of slavery in the state highlights how truly divided the citizens of California were on the eve of the American Civil War. While Northern California remained largely anti-slavery, the towns and ranches of Southern California had many sympathetic to the Southern cause. In areas such as El Monte, Big Bear, and Los Angeles, secessionists openly expressed their views and even demonstrated under the California Bear flag, vice the American flag. In March 1861, the Los Angeles Mounted Rifles was formed, which was a pro-Southern militia unit. Additionally, many Los Angeles County officials were openly in support of secession. The results of the 1860 U.S. presidential election illustrate the political division in California. Republican Abraham Lincoln narrowly won the state with 32.3% of the vote, followed closely by Democrat Stephen Douglas with 31.7%, and Southern Democrat John C. Breckinridge with 28.3% of the vote. In Los Angeles County, Southerner John C. Breckinridge won a clear majority, with Lincoln in third, barely receiving half of the votes Breckinridge had received. Abraham Lincoln won the presidency, which sparked a series of southern states to secede, beginning with South Carolina in December 1860. Over the next six months, ten more states would secede and join the Confederacy. When the Civil War began in April 1861, following the Confederate attack on Fort Sumter in Charleston, South Carolina, there was but one U.S. soldier in the Los Angeles area, Captain Winfield Scott Hancock. He would later gain fame during the Battle of Gettysburg, but in the spring of 1861, he found himself as the only uniformed soldier in a politically divided city that was roused by war in the East. To make matters worse, Hancock was stationed as a quartermaster at an army supply depot, which held weapons and ammunition. A rumor soon spread that Southern sympathizers planned to raid his depot and steal the military stores for the Confederacy. Hancock recruited some friends to defend the supplies against an attack that ultimately never materialized. In May 1861, Colonel Albert Sidney Johnston, who commanded the U.S. Army Department of the Pacific, resigned his commission. He headed to Los Angeles and was joined by Captain Louis A. Armistead, who was previously stationed in San Diego. Both of these men, who went on to fight and die for the Confederacy, joined the pro-Southern Los Angeles Mounted Rifles in the spring of 1861. Though California had a small population, it was extremely important to both sides. The Union relied heavily on the gold that came out of California to finance the war effort. In fact, General Ulysses S. Grant once stated, I do not know what we would do in this great national emergency if it were not for the gold sent from California. The Confederacy was also interested in gold, but they also desired an open harbor on the west coast, uninhibited by the Union blockade. As the nation went on a war footing, Union supporters in California, and the Los Angeles area in particular, grew very concerned. In the face of bold secessionist support in the city, many believed Southern California would join the Confederacy, unless something were done. In the face of this political division, local Los Angeles leader Phineas Banning, who founded the town of New San Pedro, today's Wilmington, wrote a letter to President Lincoln, stating that unless something were done to secure the Los Angeles area, it could be lost to the Southern cause. In response, the U.S. Army moved a garrison from Fort Tejon to Camp Latham, located near Culver City, California. In late 1861, Phineas Banning and Benjamin Wilson sold 60 acres of land south of Los Angeles to the U.S. government. They sold this land for $1 each to be used to construct a military garrison. From 1862 to 1863, Camp Drum was constructed on this site. Named for Colonel Richard Drum, the camp was comprised of 22 buildings once completed. It became home to the California Column under command of Colonel James Henry Carlton. When Texas volunteers invaded the Arizona Territory and took Tucson in February of 1862, 
Colonel Carleton was ordered to march east and take control of the territory. Carleton, who was promoted to general, took over 2,300 soldiers and made the long march through the deserts and mountains of the southwest. On April 15, 1862, they fought in the Battle of Picacho Pass, which was the westernmost battle of the American Civil War. By late summer, Carleton and his troops linked up with the Union force under command of General Canby, and together they drove the small contingent of Confederate forces back to Texas. Today, only one building still stands from Camp Drum, the Junior Officers' Quarters. It exists as the Drum Barrack Civil War Museum. I'm here at the Drum Barrack Civil War Museum in Wilmington, California. Now this is the last remaining building of an original 22 that were built for Camp Drum. This site here south of Los Angeles was very specifically chosen as a way to dissuade southern sympathizers in the area and to ensure that California stayed in the Union. Today they don't allow photos or videos inside the museum, uh, but I will say if you're ever in the area it's definitely worth checking out. They have a Gatling gun, a lot of other artifacts and exhibits that explore the history of California and its role within the American Civil War. And of course, a cannon on display out front. Though Camp Drum closed in 1871, it has been open to the public as a museum since 1987. Not far from the Drum Barracks Civil War Museum is the home of Phineas Banning, which is today known as the Banning Residence Museum. We're just down the road from the Drum Barracks to see the former home of Phineas Banning, which was built in 1864. As previously mentioned, Banning was a local leader in Los Angeles, and he contributed greatly to the area. At the outset of the Civil War, he directly pleaded with President Lincoln for Union support in California. He's also one of the men who sold land to the U.S. government on which Camp Drum was built. He constructed this elegant Greek Revival mansion, which boasts 23 rooms. Thankfully, it was restored and is open to the public. As the American Civil War entered its fourth year, California continued to experience division, as Southern sympathizers and groups such as the Knights of the Golden Circle found ways to support the Confederacy. Perhaps the most fascinating event during this time occurred on the night of June 30th, 1864, east of Placerville, California. California members of the Knights of the Golden Circle, along with other Southern supporters, planned to rob a Wells Fargo stagecoach and use the loot to recruit soldiers for the Confederate Army. It was on that warm June night at a sharp bend on the wagon road that a group of men robbed two Wells Fargo stagecoaches. They identified themselves as Confederate soldiers and stated, All we want is Wells Fargo and Company's treasure to assist us to recruit for the Confederate Army. They even presented the stagecoach with the receipt. They were initially successful in the robbery and made off with gold and silver bullion. However, it took only a few weeks for the local sheriffs and their team to capture most of the outlaws. In the end, a deputy sheriff was killed and the gold and silver was recovered. It was never used to recruit Confederate soldiers. I'm here at the Lincoln Memorial Shrine in Redlands, California. It first opened on February 12, 1932, and was founded by a local philanthropist named Robert Watchworn. He dedicated it in honor of his late son, Emery. While this site's not directly associated with the American Civil War, it does offer visitors a great experience to learn about late President Lincoln as well as the American Civil War. This is awesome. This is an 1857 Napoleon smoothbore 12 pound cannon that's dated 1864. This thing is just beautiful. And it's on display here right outside the Lincoln Memorial Shrine.
this other side of the shrine talks about the Lincoln legacy and really goes into the story of Robert Watchhorn and his family and the establishment of the Lincoln Memorial Shrine here in Redlands, which is pretty neat to learn about. The yeah, Watchhorns were actually an immigrant family who came to the United States and eventually worked their way west to Los Angeles. And of course, upon the death of his son Emery, Robert and his wife decided to establish the Lincoln Memorial Shrine, a man whom they had great respect for. And they did this in honor of their son and for any visitors to come here and learn more about Abraham Lincoln and the American Civil War and the great sacrifice so many made. One thing I really like here is that they have a timeline of events of the American Civil War all across the top here, all throughout the entire memorial. No Civil War battles were fought in California, but over 17,000 Californians fought in the American Civil War. Some served in the Eastern Theater of War, while many served in the Southwest. After the conflict, thousands of Civil War veterans, both Union and Confederate, headed west to California for the promises of a new start. These men and their families made up the backbone of Western communities helping cities such as San Diego, Los Angeles, and San Francisco grow into the major cities that they are today. Of course, with so many veterans moving to California, thousands were laid to rest there. In Los Angeles National Cemetery alone, 11,000 Union soldiers are buried. All throughout the state, particularly Southern California, you can find the graves of Civil War veterans. Next, I'll be exploring a few cemeteries in San Diego to pay my respects to those soldiers. I'm at Greenwood Memorial Park Cemetery in San Diego, California, here to visit the grave site of some of the American Civil War veterans that are buried out this way. And specifically, I'm going to be visiting three gentlemen who are all Medal of Honor recipients, two from the American Civil War and one from action carried out at a, at a later time in the 1870s, which we'll get into. Moses Augustine Luce, originally from Illinois, served as a sergeant in Company E of the 4th Michigan Infantry. During the Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse on May 10, 1864, he volunteered to charge into an advancing enemy in order to assist a wounded comrade. He successfully carried him to safety. For his brave action, Moses was awarded the Medal of Honor. This is the gravesite for Ulysses S. Grant Jr., second son to famed general and president. He was born in 1852, so he didn't fight in the American Civil War, but through his father, he undoubtedly witnessed the war's consequences. In 1893, he moved to San Diego, California, and died in 1929 at the age of 77. John Wade McDonald, a native of Ohio, entered the Union Army in Illinois and served as a private in Company E of the 20th Illinois Volunteer Infantry. During the Battle of Shiloh, on April 6, 1862, John was wounded while carrying a fellow wounded soldier to safety in the face of enemy gunfire. For his heroic actions, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. Miles Moylan was born in County Galway, Ireland. He made his way to the United States in the 1850s and worked as a shoemaker until he enlisted in the army in 1857. 
When the Civil War broke out in 1861, Miles served in the U.S. Cavalry. He fought at Wilson's Creek in Fort Henry and Donaldson in 1861, Shiloh and Corinth in 1862, and Gettysburg in 1863. Interestingly, he was dismissed from the Army in October 1863 for being in Washington City without permission. Determined to serve, Miles again enlisted in the 4th Massachusetts Cavalry under the false name Charles Thomas. He served the remainder of the war and was mustered out in November 1865. But Miles wasn't done. In January 1866, he enlisted for a third time and again served in the U.S. Cavalry. He participated in the 1868 Washita Campaign, 1873 Yellowstone Expedition, 1874 Black Hills Expedition, the 1876 Sioux Campaign and the Battle of Little Bighorn, the 1877 Nez Perce Campaign, and the 1890 Battle of Wounded Knee. In 1894, he was awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions fighting the Nez Perce Indians at Snake Creek on September 30th, 1877. I'm here at Mount Hope Cemetery in San Diego, California. Now this cemetery was established in 1869, right after the war, and is the final resting place for over a thousand veterans of the American Civil War. So today I'm mostly going to be exploring the Grand Army of the Republic burial area where a lot of these veterans are buried, which includes a few generals and even a Medal of Honor recipient. At the center of the Grand Army of the Republic section is a gravesite for a man named Thomas Chapman Shelley. Now Thomas served as a private in Company C of the 17th Illinois Infantry, and as you can see by his headstone, he lived to be almost 100 years of age. By living that long, he was actually San Diego County's last surviving Civil War veteran. What fascinates me is that not only did he serve in the American Civil War, but he also witnessed World War I and World War II. Sadly, he died before seeing the victorious end of the Second World War, but undoubtedly he witnessed so much change in this country, and unfortunately, so much bloodshed. This is the final resting place of General Datus E. Kuhn. He enlisted in the 2nd Iowa Volunteer Cavalry and was commissioned a captain. He served in that unit throughout the war and rose to the rank of colonel. Kuhn participated in numerous campaigns in the Western Theater, to include the Battle of Nashville. In 1865, he was made a Brevet Brigadier General of the United States Volunteers. After the war in 1878, he moved to San Diego and became a leading member of the Grand Army of the Republic. Sadly, he was accidentally shot in 1893 and died at the age of 62. This is a mortar on display at the cemetery. It's marked 1865, and as I was looking at it closer, in here you can actually see that there's still a round within it. Here at Mount Hope Cemetery, there are actually three different plots that are part of the Grand Army of the Republic section. And as I'm wandering around, it's just amazing to see that there were soldiers here buried from Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, this one from Iowa, uh, tons from Pennsylvania. I've seen Missouri, Kansas. And as I was looking back here in the trees, I saw another one. This one is for a gentleman named John Hall Bennett, who was a sergeant in Company E of the 15th Maine Infantry. 
And as you'll look at the death dates for a lot of these gentlemen, you know, a lot of them I noticed passed in the 1910s or 20s. And of course, in order for them to make it out here in San Diego, California, unless they were a native from the area, pretty much all of them survived the war. And to think for him, coming from Maine all the way down to Southern California, especially back in the 1800s, is, is quite the hike. This is the grave of James G. Thompson, the Civil War veteran and Medal of Honor recipient. He served in Company K of the 4th New York Heavy Artillery. On April 1st, 1865, at White Elk Road, Virginia, he and his brother Allen made a dangerous reconnaissance against Confederate troops. They advanced ahead of the Union line of battle and led soldiers through the timber obstructions. James and his brother Allen are the only brothers to receive the Medal of Honor together on the same date for the same action. I've been walking around this cemetery for quite some time now, and this is actually the first headstone I've seen for an African American who served in the Union Army. This is for a man named William Laws, who served in Company F of the 20th United States Colored Infantry. This is the grave of Charles W. Lewis, who served as a colonel in the 7th California Volunteer Infantry. He was a veteran of the Mexican-American War, as were many of his fellow soldiers in the 7th. Most of these men came from the gold fields of Northern California, which earned this unit the nickname, the Gold Diggers. The 7th primarily served in the Southwest, showing the American flag throughout Southern California and the Arizona Territory. Amidst the Civil War, a French threat in Mexico to the south forced this unit to the border to answer any threats from that quarter. In 1865, Lewis was brevetted to the rank of general. He died in 1871. After the American Civil War, it wasn't just Union soldiers that headed west and settled in California. There were also some Confederate soldiers that headed this way, and here at Mount Hope Cemetery, not too far from the Grand Army of the Republic plot, are a few of the grave sites for those Confederate soldiers. When I set out on this journey to learn more about California and its role and relationship with the American Civil War, I really didn't know what to expect or what I would discover. Um, I've actually learned quite a bit along the way, from visiting military installations to cemeteries like this and seeing the final resting place for thousands of veterans that came west after the war in search of better opportunity or even just, just maybe looking for a way to forget about the war and the horrors of that. Um, it's been pretty enlightening. I've really learned a lot and I hope you have too. So um, just remember there's really history around every corner um, in every, every part of this country that, that we can go out, seek out, find, and, and continue to learn and understand our past and those who came before us.